If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew's 10th chapter. Hallelujah. Starting at verse 5. We'll stand at verse 5. We're going to be seated out for you. If you don't have a Bible, one that's on the board. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it reads, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritan, enter ye not. You may be seated. So the first thing we have to understand is, before I get into my topic and what it's about, um, I'm going to get in that in the middle of the sermon. Praise God. That's all right with you. I don't Come on. Know if you haven't posted yet. Okay, praise God. But um, here in Matthew 10, chapter verse 5, we find that Jesus is uh, assigning, uh, making an assignment to his people. Mm -hmm. But not only is he making an assignment, but he's giving out restrictions in the assignment. Whenever you have an assignment, you can't work outside the assignment. Come on. Amen. Amen. Because then you're not in the assignment anymore. And here he tells them, he said, look here, I'm assigning you to go, but I want to make sure you're going in the right places. Come on. Because if you don't go in the right places, you're not going to be effective. And what good is going if you're not going to be effective? <laughs> don't even for me to waste my time going to talk to someone who don't want to listen. That's right. That's right. I could have saved me and you some time. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we have to make sure that we are not going outside of the restriction. He said, look, don't go to the Gentiles. Don't go to the Samaritans. Mm -hmm. He said, they ain't ready for this yet. We got to first start in the house. Mm -hmm. We got to start it. first with those who know me. That's it. Before we go to those who don't know me. That's yeah. it. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. So he said, don't deal with the Gentiles, don't deal with the Samaritans. Then he goes into verse 6 and he says, but go you rather, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, in the assignment, you got freedom. Yes, sir. When you are working within those restrictions, you got freedom. What do you mean? He will give you creativity in your assignment. Come on. When I'm telling you to go, because in order for us to grow, in order for the ministry to grow, we have to be on assignment. Come on. In order for the kingdom of God to expand, we got to be on assignment. Yeah. And the assignment requires us going, not sitting. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. We good at sitting in church. But we ain't good at going outside of the church. Yeah. Come on. We good at sitting in and listening, praying to worship. Hallelujah. Listen to the musicians. Listen to the preacher preach. But then afterward, what, what are we doing? Are we going anywhere? <laughs> so, verse te 6 tells us to make sure that we are in the assignment. And when we're in the assignment, we have freedom in the assignment. When you are called to go to a certain a type of people, you got freedom and God gave you creativity in that freedom. Yeah. Everybody can't minister to everybody. That's right. That's right. Half y'all can't talk to half the people you know. Amen. Come on. Amen. You've been friends with some folks and you don't know how to talk to them. That's right. Because oh, once you run out of your topic, where do you go at then? And sometimes people don't want to hear your topic. Amen. <laughs> okay. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Because every time you come, you talk about your problem. Nobody wants to talk about your problem. That's today. right. Glory. <laughs> okay. Lord. I'm going to be only a few more. Watch this. Verse 8. He say, uh, verse 7. And as you go, look at somebody say go. Oh. As you go, preach. Right. Say the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah, right. In other words, when you're in your assignment, stay focused. Okay. Amen. When you're in your assignment, don't get distracted. Amen. Because if not, how it's easy to 
can get distracted nowadays. That's right. So God give you restriction. He can give you freedom when you operate in it. But he also tell you to stay focused. Because sometimes we'll get caught up in us and not in him. I might have one or two with you right now. Come on. Come but watch on. this here, verse 8. Ooh, hallelujah. Somebody say Shakabaka. Shakabaka. <laughs> Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you will receive. Freely give. In other words, signs will follow your faith. Yeah, I thought I was preaching. Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, maybe I can Shaka baka. Another sermon. <laughs> Hallelujah. In other words, these signs shall follow the believer. When you operate in faith, right. when you are in your assignment, when you know your restriction, when you operate in that freedom, yes. when you are not distracted and focused, right. these things will start following you. All right. Amen. Amen. These signs shows up for the unbelief. Yeah. So signs will follow your faith. Yeah. If you tied it without faith, ain't no signs going to follow. Oh, Lord. Y'all better stay there for a little Come while. Hallelujah. When you are tied it without faith, there will be no signs of abundance. There will be no signs of overflow. There will be no signs of increase. Because you tied it without faith. That's right. Amen. And faith without works is dead. That's right. Okay, okay, okay. I'm almost there. Verse 9. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purse, verse 10 add on to it, nor scrip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes nor yet stage. For the woman, the workman is worthy of his meat. In other words, you got control over your peace. All right, all right. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Oh, man. Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all don't give me that mic. We're about Come to hear longer now. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, don't tell me that. Come on, pal. Yeah. I can hear you. Uh oh, got this mic. I was, on, I was almost finished. <laughs> now I got this mic in my hand. Hallelujah. Watch this. He said, don't get, uh, he said, provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purse, purses nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes nor yet stands, for the workman is worthy of his meat. Yes. In other words, you got the control now. Right. You have the control over your peace in ministry. That's right. That's right. Nobody has the ability to get you upset. Nobody got the ability to make you bitter about stuff. Amen. Nobody got the ability to take your peace. Amen. You got control over your peace. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had two more amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So you have control over your peace. Yeah. Amen. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Watch this. First 10, 9, 9 and 10. God say, fret not. Look at somebody say, fret not. Fret, fret not. not. In other words, he will supply your every need. Yes. Yes. If you ain't taking the stuff, then he got to supply it for you. Amen. I say, if he's not, if you're not taking it, you're not supplying it, then he got to supply. If you operate for kingdom, then he got to supply that kingdom works. Yeah. Amen. He got to give you the resources for it. Amen. Thank you. Y'all sitting there fretting over stuff, worrying about stuff, but the Bible said that I will supply you every need according to my riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Right. Right. Yeah. Amen. So, 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 verse 11 say, and into whatever city or town you shall enter, inquire, I don't need a bad, I'm good, I don't want to stretch, and into whatever city or town you shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, yes. Yes. and thereby till you go 
did it. Uh-huh. Oh, come on. In verse 12, and when you come into the in the, and when you come into in the house, salute it. Mm-hmm. And if the house be worthy, mm-hmm. let your peace come upon it. Yes. Yes. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. Okay. So you control your peace. Amen. You can walk into a situation, and if you don't like it, let your peace come back to you. Come on now. Ain't no way somebody else can take your peace away from you. Okay. Thank you. You done got me all upset. You done messed my day up. Devil is a lie. I got control over my peace. Amen. No matter what you make, proper lie. <laughs> It doesn't change who I am. Amen. I got control over my peace. Yes. 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 Look at somebody and say, control over your peace. Control over your peace. Over your peace. You got control over your peace. Yes. He's already supplying you every need. So you ain't got to be fretting about that stuff. So what's going to cause you to lose your peace is other people. But they ain't got power over you uh, unless you give it to them. Yeah. You know, there was a time I took my mom and dad peace. Because they didn't realize they had power over their own peace. But they gave me the keys to their peace. So every time I came in the house drunk, banging on doors and burning up pots in the house. Because I'm drunk. And then they had the Bible parts. They had to worry they couldn't sleep at night, worry about when I'm coming in the house and whether I'm going to burn it down or not. The peace would have been to kick my butt out. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's oh, y'all don't want to talk right here. This is my house. That's right. Son, you grow. If you don't like what's going on, get out. you can't contribute to the peace. You need to get out of my house. You know, sometimes we got to deal with kids. But we ain't got to deal with grown folks. Amen. And even with kids, I got, a, I, got, I got a solution for that, too. Amen. I got some peace on that, too. He said, train up in the child in the way they ought to go. But he also told us not to withhold that pill. Spare not that rock. I don't know how y'all let your kids talk back to you the way they talk back to you. But one of them talk back to me like that, his head will spin around like the kid on Exorcist. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, that's you can call the child abuse you want, but I'm going to have peace in my house. That's right. Amen. Amen. Tell me what you ain't going to do. Oh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for peace. Hallelujah. Watch my peace. Because I'm not going to be the one mad. You want to be the one mad. When I'm tearing you behind up, you want to be mad. I'm still going to have peace. That's right. Amen. You come there, your mouth all stuck out, I'm still laughing. I'm still smiling. You can call me all kind of stuff you want to call me, but I still got my peace. So, 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 so. Look at somebody and say, no conflict. No no Verse 14, hallelujah. hallelujah. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or a city, shake off the dust, the dust mm-hmm. of your feet. Shake off the dust of your feet. Yes. So my topic today is dusty feet. My topic of the day is dusty feet. C- 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 dusty, come on out. Come on, Dusty. Hallelujah. Come on out here, Dusty. You can just put it right there. Oh, just, uh, thank you, just, just right Ah, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Dusty, could you just stand right there at the end? Right there, right there, right there. Back on up, son. And, and face the bus. There you go. Now, uh, travel a little bit further back. Hallelujah. There you go. Y- y'all say hi to Dusty. Hey, hi, Dusty. See, how you become dusty, how your feet become dusty, is when you will start allowing stuff to accumulate on it. Amen. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It's not that high. 
I'm still talking about my hand gets dirty. <laughs> <laughs> See what happened is just the hand. He said you have to learn to do what? Uh, uh, go back to uh, uh, 14, praise God. Hallelujah. We, we see your dusty feet up there. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart. See, what happened is, when you come to folks' house, and you bring a word to them, and they don't receive you, you got to be careful that rejection don't settle on you. All right, God. Because first thing that happened with Bobby be like, man, I tried this thing. I went out and witnessed like the pastor told me to. The word told us to go out there, but then take a step. When I went out there, all of a sudden I got the stuff on my feet. Mm. I, I went by my friend's house and said, look here, man, you got to come to church with me. Come here, word me. I got Jesus in my life. I gave my life to Christ. I receive him, and you can do the same thing too. Come to church with me. Or oh, right now we can just pray together. Man, I ain't got time for that. Mm. And so, because you're here, I don't have time for you. He didn't say I had time for that. You heard I had time for you. Mm. He started receiving this stuff. Yes. He started hearing rejection. Because there was time when that same person he's talking to, he went to. Mm -hmm. And that person talked to him and drew him to a certain way. Mm. Mm -hmm. And he went free, but now he got resistance when he's doing it. Yes, sir. All right. So he's building up some stuff. Yes. And all of a sudden, if you're not careful, this thing stay with you for a while. Take another step. You go to the next door. Mm. More stuff. And more come on in. Mm. Now, you try this thing with ties, but it don't seem like it's working. And so now you you start resisting God because you say, well, I tried to tie and it didn't work. I've been tied all this time and the jobs I want don't seem like they manifest. Mm -hmm. And so you start building up bitterness against God in your giving. All right. Mm -hmm. But the Bible tells us that when you go into these houses, in order for you to keep your peace, you got to shake that dust off. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, take them, take them sandals off. Hallelujah. Cedric, go around and, uh, and give me a, a seat and set it right here. Hallelujah. Because I'm about to show you something. See, what happened is, after a while, they'll start calling them dusty feet. You ever heard someone call you gator feet? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that ain't no compliment, is it? <laughs> yeah, right there, too. Yes. Now, bring them out. Stuff about the kitchen. And so when you start having someone give you a complex, that complex affects everybody else. That's right. That's right. When you have a complex about your feet, you don't want to show your toes. Right. Right. Somebody says, Oh, you got some ugly toes. Mm. And because you allow their peace to sell in your peace, you build up a complex because you start repressing stuff and you never dealt with stuff. Hallelujah. Let's set it over there. Hallelujah. I get to it. And so what happened is, we got a lot of folks. After a while, the first thing you start saying is what? You call yourself. He start taking on the name. He start claiming what somebody else is calling him. What's your name again? See, wait a minute. Your name is Dusty Pete? Y'all remember how y'all used to get them little nicknames? Mm -hmm. The nicknames supposed to be terms of endearment, but really they cause a complex in you. They used to call me black. Before I realized black is beautiful. Oh, y'all don't know how to step into your peace. But then they were calling you black because they were using black as being negative. Oh, that's it was derogatory. Oh, come on. If you wasn't light skinned, come on, come on Lena. Oh, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. You didn't know that they had a complex with you. And then we'll try and put a complex back on somebody else. Yeah. Since Lena was light skinned, we'll call her high yellow. Yeah. What's up, yellow? Red bone. What's up, red bone? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we start taking. 
taking on these complex. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But he tells us, he said, look, in ministry, you want to be rejected. But he ain't being rejected for your name. You yeah. being rejected for my name's sake. Well, yes, sir. Yeah. Hallelujah. So people come up against you not because of you. Mm-mm. Because somebody else. You leave some stuff. Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Hallelujah. Lord. Yes, Lord. I got my civil bowl. Praise God. Yeah. But the Bible tells us to shake the dust yeah. shake off your feet. So get your little sandals and, 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 and shake it off. There you go. See, that's how you got to do. Now I'm telling y'all to shake the dust off your feet. I don't care what people told you in your life that was negative. Shake the dust off shake your feet. That's right. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it all off. Watch it. He's in the part of that house or that city. Shake off the dust off the feet. See, sometimes you might be talking to an audience that reject you. Or sometimes you might be talking to an individual that reject you. That's why he said house or city. Yes. It could be a big audience or a small audience. Right. You might go and preach at a church and then they don't receive it. Yeah. Shake the dust off yeah. your yeah. feet. Yeah. Don't sit there and judge them. Yeah. No, 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 no. Silver, silver, silver. It's all in there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then I move my stuff in there. Don't worry, I'm chopping heads. Could you erase that part out of there? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I have a seat. And in the process of sitting down, you got to get ready for an overflow. All right now. In other words, if we're not careful, emotional uh, connection that are repressed can cause us to have abnormal mental uh, uh, perspectives about things. Mm-hmm. Not only is abnormal having an abnormal mental state, but abnormal behavior. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because we allow somebody else's psychosis to be ours. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. It's silver. It's sitting on. It's big round silver. Please, it's in there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was sitting on the freezer. I don't know why y'all move stuff. But Lord, help me right now. Let me not get distracted. Let me stay focused. Come on, on, y'all can laugh about something. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Lord Jesus, could you go get that bowl? Thank you, man. Hallelujah. Uh, y'all, the rest of y'all, come on out that kitchen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all, y'all just added to y'all causing the psychosis up in here. <laughs> y'all, y'all causing me to have a complex. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's big silver. It's a basin. Hallelujah. Somebody done moved it. It might have took around on the other side to bring milk and stuff. Hallelujah. So got to check more than one place. It's in the house. Amen. Tell somebody it's in the house. It's in the house. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. The devil is a lie. Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. See, that, that, it's not a devil. It's a lack of uh, communication. Right. Your feet, Hallelujah. Man. I ain't told enough folks. <laughs> Hallelujah. So somebody decided to get my bowl yeah. and move it. Praise God. Yeah. And they took it on the other side. I guarantee it's on the other side. Of it. Yeah, I know. Hallelujah. Because if it wasn't in the kitchen, ain't no way they bring out them little pots and pans out there. And bring me a lid. Hallelujah. I can open something up. See, watch this. Oh, y'all just heard that. Bitterness can set in. Right. Hello. I gave him a assignment to go. Yes. Yes. When you get frustrated because you couldn't find it. Yes. Yes. Oh, y'all don't want to talk. Yeah, you got it now. Hallelujah. But there was some psychosis working yes. up in there. Yes. Hallelujah. You begin to get a little upset and bothered by stuff. Y'all got a way of working that mess right on up in there. Well, we did with looking. Amen. Oh, I heard somebody. Okay, we tried to find the camp. Amen. And that's what happened. You allow stuff like that to make you better. So he said, shake the dust off your feet. Somebody said, shake it off. Shake it off. Hallelujah. But watch this here. You hold tight, Brother Paul. We want to get to you. Uh, watch verse 15. He said, Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable to for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. In other words, you don't have to hold a judgment. I'm going to say that again. You don't have to hold a judgment. You don't have to worry about getting vengeance for somebody else. You ain't got to hold that weight. God's, God's, God's going to deal with that issue. So we hold in bitterness for no reason. Because they reject us for God's word. Because we didn't speak it as eloquent as somebody 
somebody else. We didn't speak it in the right cadence to somebody else. Right. We wasn't so flowery with our stuff. We just say your nose got a book in it, and that's what it is. All right. We didn't go, well, you know, you got a little bit of something, something. We didn't use diplomacy like anybody else. And so we can reject it because we will try to operate in our assignment. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but we ain't finished yet. Hallelujah. So we almost there. Watch this. I'm almost there. Watch this. And verse 16 say, Behold. Look at somebody say, Behold. Behold. I've seen you folk as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpent and harmless as doves. Amen. In other words, you can't be harmless with a complex. That's right. That's right. Amen. That complex is going to always come out. That's right. Amen. You want to always talk about somebody else's feet. Right, Dusty? No, Dusty. You ain't Dusty no more. Come on, all right, there you go. Hallelujah. In other words, Bobby, it's time for you to get ready for an overflow. Oh, y'all don't want to talk up in here right now. I said it's time for you to get ready for an overflow. Raise your hands up. And begin to give God a praise. Come on, put up both hands. I'm getting ready for an overflow. I'm releasing that bitterness. Yeah. I done shook that stuff off. Yeah. Now it's time to receive my overflow. Yeah. Thank you. Roll your pants up. Thank I'm getting you. ready for an overflow. Roll them up some more. I'm getting ready for an overflow. You. Hallelujah. You got to get a high. Hallelujah. About like you about to step in the lake. Oh, I'm getting ready for an overflow. Oh, I'm getting ready for an overflow. Yes, I'm God. getting ready for an overflow. Yes, Come on. You got to tell yourself. You get ready for an overflow. Hallelujah. I wish I had a couple of people getting ready for an overflow. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Bobby, put them hands up. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready for an overflow. Yeah. I'm releasing the bitterness out of my life. The bitterness that's been buried in my life. The bitterness I've been baptized in. I'm getting ready to come out. I'm getting released from this thing. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready for an overflow. Hallelujah. Because you're getting ready for an overflow. Yeah. Hallelujah. How are getting to wash it away? Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. I, I know some of y'all be like, well, I can't understand why they have foot washing service. Because uh, their feet were stink. <laughs> and they needed to be perfumed up a little. Come, come on, just a little bit. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. <laughs> so after a while, he began to wash away all that bitterness and stuff. You shake. Don't always come off. That's right. Y'all don't, don't, don't want to talk me up in here. The stuff you shake don't always come off. You ain't never walked in the sand and then you got to your tower at the beach and you still ain't dust. You still ain't sand between your toes. No matter how much you shake it, it still ain't get off. What God is saying there, what you can't get off, I'll take the rest of it. So you gotta get ready Watch. for your hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. hallelujah. Now now I need for you to move that bucket. Hallelujah. Come on, say it. Come on. Keep your feet up in there. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank my you. God. Thank you, Lord. Come on, my God. My God. He's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Now he don't he don't watch that. Oh. He done moved that out of the way. Uh -huh. Look at that. Now he shook his feet. Uh -huh. Can you see that? Can y'all see that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, hey, y'all on here. Look. <laughs> Can y'all see that? Look at that. Y'all see that dirt in that water? Y'all remember how he shook his feet? But he still had dust between his toes. Yeah. But the more the Holy Spirit poured on him. All that bitterness that was covered, all that bitterness that was buried. Hallelujah. He released it. He poured it out. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, they'll be on there when we get that. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. He said, now get ready for an overflow. Amen. Anybody ready for an overflow out there? Yes. Anybody ready for God to overflow in their life? We need a pouring right now. This is an overflow right now. Yes, Lord. He ain't just giving him a little bit, but he's giving him a lot. He poured more than what he needs, even though his feet was already clean. But God, I'm giving you an overflow. It's time for an overflow. It's time for an overflow in your finance, or overflow in your marriage, or overflow in your home, or overflow in your children. Yes, God. 
See, I'm getting ready for the overflow. You need to get ready for the overflow. So the Lord told me, you ready for the overflow? Yes, God. He said, what I want you to do, I want you to take back those seats that you took out of here and put it back on the wall. Because get ready for your overflow. Hallelujah. You walk in that faith for a partial move. Yes, you walk in there only for temporary. But I want you to have a permanent fix on it. Yes. Every day you want to speak to those seats. Okay. Every day you want to speak to soul to fill those seats. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready for the overflow. You can't get ready for overflow. You don't act in faith. When that woman, hallelujah, when the prophet spoke to her, hallelujah, he said, go and bake me a little cake. Hallelujah, fix me a little cake. Give me a little water. Hallelujah. And she said, I ain't got much. I just got this little bit. For me and my child, we're going to take this and die. He said, but fix mine first. And give me a part of it. Act it out on it. And when you act upon it, I'm going to give you an overflow. To the point she had to go and get buckets. She had to go and burn barrels. She had to go and burn pills. She had to go and burn stuff. Hallelujah. For an overflow. And guess what? God didn't stop until she stopped pulling up pills. Hallelujah. So if I can stick some seats up on the seat. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me up here. My faith is being reacted right now. My faith has hooked on to a prophecy. It has hooked on to a word. Hallelujah. I'm flowing in the overflow. Come on. Come on. If your finance, if your finance, if your finance, you know your finance has been hindered, come to the altar now. Come on. 